Hello, I'm Morris Kohansky, Wilderness Living Skills and Survival Instructor. You're probably uh, determining by the uh, videos you see on, on YouTube and so on that there's an awful lot of books that I'm involved with. I, um, I have a lot of books. I, I don't know, they're in the thousands and thousands. And of course, I have endeavored to try to be an author. I often mention that I wrote a book called Bushcraft, which was no accident that it turned out the way it did because I studied for quite a few years on, on uh, how to you know, write a book that appeals. Here I have seven books that sort of defy a bit of categorization, but we want to talk about uh, surprises or about unusual things. And if only you knew about them, then you would probably lay your hands on it. Uh, here is a book, uh, it's called The Guide's Manual, written by the Brothers Herders. Now, Herders used to be a big, uh, well, I know they still exist, but I haven't um, run across their catalogs. They used to have an enormous catalog, as big as uh, big city phone books and all the things that they used to sell and produce and so on. And they produced a stack of books, of which the very first one was called The Professional Guide's Manual, which I guess the intention was that the focus that Herders had was on on meeting the needs of the trapper and the guide and the camper and the outdoor people. And in its way, it's kind of a disjointed book written by people who you can tell they're not outright scholars, but you get the feeling that they're very rich and very well to do. And they're kind of interested in the topic, so they, they've put it together. Uh, if you run across the book, you won't be sorry you acquired it. Um, uh, I, uh, they're not that common, I suppose, but when Herters was going full tilt, I think I ordered every book that they, they had published, which is part of my library. You'll notice that I have quite a few references in there marked, which uh, in the near future I probably will be drawing heavily on that book. Now another book that is kind of uh, unusual in that it was written probably in the middle 1800s, and it was written, it was called uh, 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 Art of Travel. And Francis Galton came from a bunch of mathematicians and other well-known naturalists and so on. And at that era, there were a lot of people going into distant places in the world. Uh, uh, that is, they would have to camp and they would have to travel. They'd have to be mobile. And so here is a book that analyzes uh, this sort of knowledge and makes strong suggestions as to what to take with you and, and how to figure out things scientifically when you'd have to be confronted by a, a solution. Like, for example, let's say you're in a desert and you have a horse and you don't want the horse to run away. How deep a hole? Let's say you got a little stick, maybe a pencil thick stick. How deep do you dig it into the sand and bury it in, in that hole and the horse can't pull it out? Well, you'll find those sort of answers. And you'll find all kinds of camping suggestions that uh, were prevalent at the time. And, and uh, Mr. Galton would uh, be anxious that you knew that at least. Now here's a book that's unusual in that I've seen it on sale <coughs> a lot, mainly because of the title, I would say. The title is The L.L. Bean Guide to the Outdoors. Well... Everybody assumes that it's got something to do with the catalog and with the things he carries. Well, it does in a way, because L.L. Bean would stock a lot of the boots and, and everything to develop by, by his uh, outfit and so on. But I would say that when you look at the book and get to know it, this would be a superior textbook for a university course, like the Introduction to Outdoor Education or whatever. This is a very well-written book with regard to the topics that it covers, whether it's snowshoeing or gators or, or choice of skis or tents or, or whatever. In the sense of modern knowledge for its time, now this, gets, this book is probably 20 years old now, but I would say I probably bought 20 copies of this book because they were on sale and they were so inexpensive and I would always, uh, I always found that it was astounding that such a uh, a good book was always put up on sale because no one seemed to want to buy it. Now another book that I ran across recently that I did not know of its existence 
It's called Public Works, which is kind of a... You wonder what the heck that means, Public Works. <laughs> what the person here figured that you should have one big book to just about answer every problem as a normal modern person, whether it's, uh, you know, how to uh, maintain your vehicle, to how to uh, do this, how to do that, and so on. So he pretty well put it on the cover. And what happens is that all of these articles that are in this book are in the public domain. That means that their um, uh, copyright has run out, that anybody has access to this. Well, actually, if he puts it all on the cover, then he ends up copywriting it. But, uh, but at any rate, so what do we have here? Well, we have the reproduction of uh, a real classical United States Air Force survival manual to begin with. And then you've got, you know, how you should conduct yourself with regard to things like viruses. Um, and more on how to be your own doctor. Um, the recipes, farm and home. And uh, everything that a person in a comprehensive uh, workshop on the farm would should know whether it's using an oxyacetylene torch, bricklaying, you know, name it, name it, maintenance and repair of motor vehicles. And so, of course, vehicles have gotten more sophisticated th than this. But I would say, if you can get a hold of a copy, 1974, that I, I particularly said, how come, I acquired this probably in the last year, and I said to myself, how did I miss this one? That, uh, that there was a publication that uh, uh, covered, uh, I mean, I could almost write five books by using this as the starter for the quality of information that they isolated out of the general thing, whether it's first aid and survival, health, child care, food, farm and home tools of construction, transportation, government, dealing with the government, dealing with money, on and on. Now another hidden sort of thing that we don't see very often is the French. I have spent a, a short while in France and discovered the French uh, scout manuals, the stuff written in French. So uh, if you have the opportunity to be able to read French, some very, very refreshing good stuff, just like the Australians. If you can buy books on what the Australians do, whether it's camping or survival, you will get a, a, a new insight compared to what we are, are sort of working between the Europeans and North America. And uh, the fellow that brought this up is a kind of a friend of mine, um, Jan Chote. He is a, he was, I haven't talked to him for maybe 10 years now, but he used to send us, uh, all people who were interested in survival, a kind of... Um, 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 newsletter, which eventually maybe he couldn't afford to send it out anymore. But he created, uh, a, a, in my estimation, a very superior survival manual. And it's written on paper that you can actually read this in a shower without damaging it and so on. But it's sea survival. His specialty is sea survival. Another thing that I found that is very refreshing is someone said that you could get this as a PDF file. Uh, which uh, uh, we will provide you with that, I guess. It's called the Alaskan Village Science. And what it is, is the topics of science that are useful to the Native people being educated in some of the Alaska schools. So that means that it relates to travel, fish drying, processing of meat, Insulating homes, building your own stoves, uh, uh, the the issues and hazards of water travel, how to keep your snowmobile running, uh, on and on and on, in the sense that it cuts to the chase, and it like another book that I mentioned, that this would be more of a survival manual than many manuals I've encountered because of the practical, useful information that you find with regard to doing things right, whether, whether it's uh, you know, fixing something or making it run or understanding the principles behind, the science behind how a boat passes through the water or et cetera, et cetera. And then on top of that, I discovered that 
Alaska seems to be the source of a lot of good stuff. And here is a book that's uh, very enjoyable, and it's called Alaska Science Nuggets. So someone has written a book here, Neil Davis, on the science that relates to the phenomenon that everybody encounters on a regular basis, whether it's the weather phenomenon or any uh, nature uh, type stuff. Uh, and I would say that if I had to suggest 10, 10 books, uh, the, the number nine and number 10 could very, very close to be in the top 10 of all, all time with regard to the books that impress me uh, on, on, on the issue of being a book lover or a connoisseur of books, a bibliophile.